Today we're going to show you a couple of different techniques to clean 45s. I'm talking about the old 7-inch 45s. I suspect most audiophiles and record collectors have at least a few of those hanging around, so we thought we'd break a few of ours out, clean them, and give them a listen. Before we get to the record that we're going to clean today, though, I want to say thank you to our subscribers and viewers. We have folks from all over planet Earth watching us from the UK, Canada, Australia, the Netherlands, Germany, Spain, Sweden, I even have one fella from the Republic of North Macedonia. How cool is that? And of course, folks all over the good old US of A. I noticed we don't have anyone from Japan, and I am just such a huge fan of Japanese audiophile equipment and music. The whole culture around music in Japan is pretty fascinating. So if any of you know anyone in Japan, maybe you could forward one of our videos to them. I'd love to get a foothold there as well. Also want to say thank you to our female subscribers. We do have a few. It is a known fact that female audiophiles are cooler and better looking than average. It's true of the guys too. Anyway, here's the record that we're going to clean for you today. This is 1975's Convoy. That's right, the novelty song by C.W. McCall. It was a big hit back in the day, sort of capitalized on the whole CB craze. It also inspired the Sam Peckinpah movie Convoy, which I once tried to watch and simply could not get through. Another interesting thing about this record, though, it was written by Chip Davis. Chip Davis is the man that went on, actually, he had just founded the group Mannheim Steamroller. Uh, which went on to make uh, several albums under the title Fresh Air, one, two, and three, and so forth. Kind of an early new age pop classical combination. Some of it's kind of cool, actually. Anyway, let's take a closer look at Convoy. It is, without a doubt, a disgustingly dirty album. I acquired this record in 1975 and have never cleaned it, but we're going to do that today. Let's get to it. Let's clean this record. Whatever method you use to clean your 7-inch 45s, you're going to want to have an aftermarket sleeve in which you'll insert the clean record. Ours are from BCW. They have a paper outer but are lined with a polymer inner. It helps to keep the record nice and clean. And also, especially if you're going to keep the original outer sleeve, you want something like this. These are resealable covers. It'll obviously store the record in the uh, aftermarket outer sleeve, but you can also put the original outer sleeve in with it. So keep it all together nice and clean. We uh, got these from Elusive Disc. That's an online retailer that we highly recommend. Good guys there. Before we get started on cleaning our 45, I wanted to share a new acquisition with you. This is a recommendation, actually a request for a review from one of our subscribers, so thank you for that. It's called TurgiClean. It's a highly concentrated record cleaning fluid. You only use between 10 and 20 drops per gallon of water. Looking forward to trying it out, and thanks for the recommendation. One of the ways to clean a 7-inch 45 is with the suction type machine, in our case a VPI Cyclone. VPI makes a wand specifically for 45s. As you can see, the little velvet lips on each side of the slit there are just long enough to cover a 45 record. We also love Osage brushes, and they make one specifically for 45s. Isn't that cute? Yes, it is. Lastly, you're going to need one of these. Who remembers these from the 70s, huh? These are plastic inserts. They're known as spiders, and they fit into the larger hole of a 45. You'll need this to ensure that the 45 fits properly over the center spindle. You can also use these to play your 45s. Some guys will prefer these sort of things. It's just a plastic cap. This is great for playing, but will not work with a suction machine because of its height. You have to be able to use the knob to snug the record against the cork mat, so you'll need a spider. In addition to that, of course you're going to need record cleaning fluid. In this case we're going to use lard de sang and a pure water rinse. Normally when we clean records we have separate wands and columns for the record cleaning fluid and the pure water rinse. I just don't have that many 7 inch 45 so we'll just have to do an extra good job of cleaning the brushes in between stages. Other than that, oh, by the way, we'll use our ultra pure water for that. We'll want to start off with a Giotto blaster just to blow off any of the large debris, and we have a soft toothbrush to keep 
the brushes clean in between stages, just as we do with all records. So that's how we're the approach we're going to take with the VPI. Let's get to it and we'll show you how to clean this little record. Okay, we've got our 45 adapter inserted. The spider is in its place. We're going to go ahead and hit it with the Giotto Blaster. Also like to hit the cork mat. Okay, make sure that the brush is thoroughly cleaned, especially since we only have one brush to work with. We want to make sure it's clean before we apply the water. One of the challenges I found in working with 7-inch 45s is you have so little room to work with, it's not uncommon to get liquid onto the label itself. It's not going to hurt the label, especially if you just dab it off with a nice, clean, soft, dry towel in between sides. For side two, I'm going to remove any debris that may have fallen onto the cork bed. Since we're using just one wand here, we want to clean this off.
because the label is inevitably a bit damp, always happens on these little 45s, I would recommend uh, putting this into a dish rack or otherwise setting it aside and to let it thoroughly dry before inserting it into the new outer sleeve. Another way to clean your 7-inch 45s is with an ultrasonic machine. Behind us you'll see the KL Audio. It's a great machine and it does offer a 7-inch adapter. It's basically a, a plastic disc. It has a, a mechanism to attach the 7-inch disc and insert it into the mechanism. It'll work with the existing rollers. It's north of $250 just for that adapter. We do not have one. It's just not worth it. Don't have that many 7-inch 45s to worry about. However, we do also have the Kermis machine, and it has a 7-inch slot ready to go. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to put this 7-inch 45 through the Kermis restoration process. We've filled the tank with distilled water, degassed it twice. We have our mise en place here ready to go with the Lazy Susan and the felt pad that is designed specifically for 45s for 7-inch 45s. We've got the goat hair brush that, that will be used to apply the compound. This is distilled water just for cleaning purposes. We have the optician's cloth and a couple of microfiber cloths underneath ready to go and to mop up any additional water. We're going to start with a ultrasonic clean before we apply any surfactant or any chemical. Three minutes should be just plenty for this record. That's our initial clean. Take the record out. Give it a little wiggle. If there's any additional water, it'll drop off, or excess water, I should say. There we go. Because we have so little surface area to work with here, we don't need three full squirts of the compound as we use on a 12 inch record. So I'm just gonna to try to hit the edges just a bit. Still in three areas. Be careful with this one or you will get it on your label. Actually a nice way to do it might be just to hold it up and go like that. Little ones as I can do. Then I recommend holding the goat hair brush tightly towards the end to kind of compact or minimize the size of the bristles at the end of the brush. And go ahead and do a little round pattern. Back the other way. And then I'm finding that I like to do one continuous sweep all around, just like that. Ditto for side two. It's perfectly acceptable to just dab off. Excess water, like you might be able to see there, as long as your microfiber cloth is soft and dry and clean, so you don't further dilute the compound. As little squirts as you can get. There you go. Again, choke up on that brush. Once around in one direction, and then back in the other. This is the same basic pattern motion that I use with full 12 inch records. And once all the way around. Just make sure you have complete coverage and we've addressed the static charge. Okay, pop that out. And again, three minutes should be just plenty.
Now, if you've seen some of our previous episodes where we featured the Kermis restoration process and where we were cleaning some of the best, highest quality audiophile recordings, our most treasured records, we might go through this process two, three, even four or five times. However, this is a novelty 45. So for this process, we're going to call her done. But we still want to address the static charge. So first thing we're going to do is use the optician's cloth to dry the record. Both sides. You might have noticed I, I changed the little plastic insert to one that wasn't quite so tight. By the way, you could have also left the insert, the 45 insert or the spider in there. That would have worked just fine as well. Make sure you get the edges. Okay, the record is now dry. Now we'll want to take our second goat hair brush, which I've previously cleaned, and apply just a touch of the compound to it. And give it a quick pass. This just renders any static charge that we've put on the record neutral. You could also use a zero stat as a similar effect. Okay, let's go give this, shall we call it an amusing little record. Let's go give it a listen. Okay, we gave Convoy a listen. It was a fun little record, brought back great memories. Uh, but before we give you our final thoughts, I wanted to demonstrate how the uh, aftermarket sleeve and the protective outer cover works. Obviously you just insert. This is now fully dry so I'm comfortable putting it away. This is clearly not the original outer sleeve but let's pretend it is for purposes of this demonstration something that you wanted to keep. The idea here is to remove this little strip which reveals a bit of sticky. You just discard that. And the idea is to insert both the record and the original outer sleeve into this outer protective cover. And this folds over and sticks down. You can open and close that many times. So nice, clean, and well-protected 45. Okay, final thoughts and for the record. We hope you enjoyed our demonstrations of how to clean these little 7-inch 45s. And by the way, if you're new to the record collecting audiophile world, you might hear of full-size 12-inch records that are designed to operate at 45 revolutions per minute. Those tend to be high-end recordings, audiophile reissues. They are theoretically superior sounding, but you do have the downside of breaking up the album side, the intended album side, so that's subjective as to whether that's a, a better choice for you. But as far as the little seven inches are concerned, if you got them and you want to clean them, we showed you a few ways to do that. Musically speaking, is this something I would recommend? Well, I'll tell you what, it was real joy to listen to. If you remember the CB era, maybe it's worth picking this up. Or you can find it on the album, which was C.W. McCall's sophomore effort, Black Bear Road. So that's another option for you. We'll see you at the next record. Breaker 1-9, this here's the duck. You got a copy on me, Big Ben? Come on. <laughs>